Howdy, folks. Jeff Klein here. We are live here on a Tuesday morning for our monthly speaker spotlight for speaker co-op. We've got three great folks today presenting for you. And our first speaker comes through Forbes magazine is one claim to fame he has. He is also the financial freedom guy. Well, freedom. financial freedom guy. And uh, he helps folks get their businesses in a situation where they have more money at the end of the month than they do time, as opposed to the other way around. Uh, he's been a business coach uh, long enough to know better, and he's going to share some of that wisdom with us today. Let's welcome Kirk McLaren. Yeah, so Jeff, th thank you for the introduction. Just uh, this is a small group. Same, I think you're you're another speaker. Is that right? Yes. So I'm going to learn learn what you do. And, and Alex, what what about you? What's your, what's your thing in life? Um, I teach primarily. So I speak, but I'm learning business speaking. Oh, nice, nice. So um, that's good. And, and, and Sam, are you a, are you a business owner as well? I sure am. Yeah, go business, right? The small business people, we, we make it happen. So, so just just uh, kind of break it down here. My, my stories are geared to business owners, but it's very adaptable. I mean, I, business owners, some all the way through succession. You know, they they got the big check and off doing something else, but but the approach that we're going to talk about also applies. I got I got a group of you know all young men. It happens to be uh, they're, they're all army officers in their mid twenties, and so so the the approach literally you know, we're talking about life, right? And having the life that you need to have for financial freedom, all that kind of good stuff. And so like um, when when Jeff invited me to you know do this discussion, you know, I, I thought about a couple of stories. And the first one that came to mind is a business owner by the name of Stephanie. And she's, you know, Stephanie's just fantastic, right? She, she can't, you know, she runs a product business and um, like, like a lot of us, right? She's head down, she's grinding away, she's putting in massive hours and maybe the, the household income is okay, but it's not great. Like it's not freedom, generational level stuff. And she happens to be married and has two kids. And so it's a real tug of war. Right with priorities, you know what? How to, you know, how can I do multiple things well? Especially we got family members that you actually love and want to have a relationship with them. And then there's um, another another business owner came to mind, uh, Stephen, and he's at a different part of the curve. Right, he runs an engineering construction company where he bends rivers basically to be more economic or environmentally friendly kind of stuff, and really like heavy construction to move a river from A to B. He's at a different phase where he recently sold his business he got he got the big check in his case he got he got 40 million dollars so you know, you think financial freedom but then i watched him go into total despair like wow you know you know steven what's what's going on and he, and he described uh you know his, his friends not understanding him because he's got the big check and why is he you know why are things in life not not feeling good and um and that, that kind of brought me from my own journey, you know, growth CFO, business building. And I, I currently have you know, 29 employees globally doing growth CFO work side by side with, with business owners and, and their, their, you know, their management team to, to get certain outcomes. And, um, and so, so Steven brought me to like, man, it's almost like malpractice. We work for years with these business owners, you know, get the household income to where it's really good and get time in the business down where that they have, time for the people they love and um and then the succession options right there's there's really seven great options and and then i realized that, you know literally like people like steve i'm taking them up to the edge of the cliff and like good luck right you got the 40 million and so, so i started to realize that there's more, there's more than that there's more than the business there's, there's life right and how do you build a business um i'm not i'm not good at building lifestyle businesses i'm just not that person you know, i'm from Texas and Army and 30 years of building businesses, first one in high school kind of thing, built and sold it. So, so I'm into building businesses that have a life, but not not lifestyle businesses. It's a it's a very different thing. But um, but you might say lifestyle because how do you get your time from 60 hours down to 16 hours per week? You know, it, it sounds more like a fantasy to, to a lot of people who are caught into the grind. So so the problem is for the I work for 
with small business owners, right? Everything from a million to 50 million. There's some outliers that are doing, you know, 130 million kind of stuff, but the methods you adapted for each person based on where they're at, it, it works. So the problem is something, even for the big businesses, you know, the business owners are in the grind. They're, they're still working massive hours and, um, and, and uh, household income, depending on where they're at with their, their business building journey, uh, it could be good, but very few, even the big businesses, very few are really hitting like that freedom level and, and very few know what it is. Like, what would they do, right? If, uh, when, when the money is good and, um, and then generational level, you know, do you want to, uh, you know, put something in place where multiple generations have resources to become the people that they were born to be? So, so the, the problem is kind of stuck, right? We, we get stuck. Um, and if it continues, I don't know about you, but health suffers, right? We're commuting, grinding away, thinking about stuff. You know, the, the mental energy spent, health can suffer phys physically and mentally. And, and certainly relationships. I, I raised two sons who happen to both be Army officers. And I I, I saw them, you know, I, I got up early, left early, came back late. Saw them on the weekends. I saw them kind of at night when they're going to bed. Um but but the, you know my, my relationship suffered with them because of the, basically the way I worked right and um, I was just driven to get get certain outcomes so so like me other business owners if they continue like this health isn't good relationships suffer and and joy like why why are we here you know why are we here what's what's the purpose if it's just, just kind of grinding away so so it, it kind of you know literally thirty years and more recently the last last you know, 10 years is growth CFO, reimagine what is, you know, most CFOs are really accountants, right? They're, they're the kind of people that business owners, if we talk to our accountant by what, whatever title they have, they tell you, don't do it. We don't have the money, play it safe. And, and we know as business owners, if we, if we played it safe, there'd be no business at all because safe is getting a paycheck, staying in, staying in that, in their, your lane kind of thing versus going out and doing something new. Like some of you are, you know, public speaking kind of thing, stepping out on the stage. And so, so from that experience, you know, reimagine what is it, what is a true CFO, the kind of CFO that's like a navigator to a business owner who's a pilot and uh, how to, you know, working side by side accountable for, for outcomes. So, so, that that's what we're talking about, and what it what it came to is um, like growth CFO, hands on CFO work is there. There's three things that can make a difference. That no matter where you are in your life, you could be the the 26 year old army officer to to Stephen who just sold his business for 40 million to Stephanie who who's you know she has an active family life and working on her business. Three things get get real clear on destination. The next thing is flight plan. You know, what options do we have? What scenarios do we have? Go to market, deliver, that kind of stuff. And then follow through. How do you, how do you follow through, especially as your, as your teams, you know, your team members, your, your employees, as they expand, how do you make sure that follow through is on the level that, that, that you want things done on so that you, have, you establish your reputation in the marketplace? So I'm going I'm I'm to break down on those three things, those key things, destination, start with the end of mind kind of stuff. And, it, and it's funny, for the longest time, you know, I might be talking about the business vision. And I started to realize, wow, you know, there, there's um, the fall through isn't so good, right? We're, we're talking about business vision, objectives, next step, like the number one challenge, number one opportunity. And um, with, with literally business owners, we work business owners across the USA, in the UK, Canada, Australia, even, uh, you know, Pakistan, the Himalayan Salt Company. Um, and started knowing you know, this trend. Once it, once the pain is solved and things are okay with the business owner, the motivation to do the next thing go, starts to drop a lot. If if when we were just talking at the you know, the vision for the business, and you might say I'm hard headed, but it took a while for me to learn. But I, I might be hard headed, but I did learn. Where no, it's more than that. You, you know, I, I, we got to connect with the business owner based on who they are in their life, and then once we know you know, what their purpose is, you know, they're wearing the right hat, the best way to use their time. Then, um, then we know how to build the business, right? We, we, both the economic aspect and other aspects, if we know really connected with who that business owner is, what they really care about, what they were born to do, that, um, then 
it, it gets smarter. Well, what's the right hat? Where are all those hats, how they use their time now is not making sense. So we came up with a vivid vision of their future self. And it's, um, you know, I basically came up, collaborated with other people, experts, figured things out. And I, I pretty much eat my own, own soup. So if we're doing the, the vivid vision with, with uh, business owners, we do it first with ourselves in, in, in my companies. Um, and that's get clear destination. So I'm going to encourage everybody, uh, what, the gift, the giveaway, if you, if you want to have a one page or kind of a worksheet to guide a person to create their own vivid vision of their future self. Um, and it's really important. Here's a word you'll never hear from another finance, you know, gross CFO finance person, but it's really important to get into your feelings there. Like, you know, paint this picture. I'm, I'm doing this with my husband or wife and the people I care about. And it's a Sunday afternoon. I can feel the breeze and it, and how it, you got to describe how it feels. It feels amazing. I can't believe this is better than I expected. And it, maybe I'm looking back on how did I get here? So describing it as, as if it's already done. And I, and I emphasize the feelings because the language of the mind, you know, for 65 million years, the language of the mind is feelings, right? So that's what, that's what hits home. That, that's what gets anchored. And once you anchor your vision there, you start to see things in your life. Does it line up to my vision or does it take me away from my vision? And if it takes me away from my vision, how about I don't do it? <laughs> it's that simple, right? So now it's conscious level decision-making versus logic has been around for roughly 100,000 years. So that logic is good too. I like that as a finance guy. I like the black and white numbers. So get real clear on destination. You know, literally paint a picture and you start figuring out your bucket list and you start figuring out, you know, your, you know key things to do to get there. And then also black and white, figure out, you know, not, you know, ha household income for basic stability. There, there's five levels of a household income. I won't go through all of them, but, you know, the basics, then you start getting to beyond the basics, freedom, where it might be a second house and a place that you enjoy, the weather's nice, whatever, whatever it is for you. And then generational, right, that legacy stuff, which a lot of time it means that, that's impact other people. Um if you're really optimizing, if you got something, assets, you're, you're really optimizing your life, there's ways of having your own nonprofit and you can develop, you know, uh, I, I focus on developing the, the, the humans in my life, you know, helping them break through self-imposed limits. I, I don't focus much on, let me give you a bunch of money because I, I, I'm a trustee for certain families and I, I see what giving people lots of money does with, when it's done without the human development. So I focus more on the, you know, you know, from a legacy standpoint, how do you really develop people to, to on multiple levels are healthy, doing well, and um, and then then the financial resources needed, which passive income, so they're not doing active hours. So so I'm gonna go on kind of destination, those two things, vivid vision, household income, really define it black and white. What is freedom? What's generational? Uh, what what allows you from a resource standpoint to live the life that you were born to have? You start getting clear. I don't know about you, but when I, when I, when I do that type of thing, whether it's for myself or with a business owner, I start to get excited. Like, oh, God, it's clear. Oh, God, it's black and white. It's a number now. I, I, can, I can get there versus just some abstract concept of possibilities. Um, making things black and white really matters. And then the next step is flight plan. And I don't have to know all the answers. I don't, I don't need a perfect answer anywhere, even for vivid vision. I just need my, my, my current level of clarity, whatever that is. Never let perfections uh slow you down um and then flight plan well how do i get there what if what if what if right Let, let's say that there's a something in your business that's taking you time and maybe it's, it's not the hat that you were born to wear uh could somebody else do that right could you start to delegate there's literally you have the, the entire globe of experts and talent and labor available to you uh if if you're doing like like you know, like office computer level work. Um, if it's in person, like you're building houses, you, you might need to get somebody in the same neighborhood. But um, other than that, you know, the tangible stuff. So you, you start having, if, there, if there's somebody else can do it, at least 80% well, that's that's performance. So 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 the, the second part of the formula, if you have the flight plan, what if, what if? What are different options where I can go to market and get the kind of clients I can do my best work with? Uh, what about delivery? Are there some ways to really gain competitive advantages that set me apart from everybody else? Remarkable work and so effective and cost effective that it's really making sense. And with, with the five emerging technologies, you know, it's good to ask, 
what am I doing? The five emerging technologies are like AI, Web3, blockchain, robotics, um, crypto. You know, what am I doing now? And what do I expect to be doing in three years with those technologies? If I, just by asking the question, I start to answer it, right? And that uh, would encourage people definitely to have uh, that thinking in their flight plan, plus other traditional things. But the, the technology, these are very disruptive technologies, any, any one of them. Aut autonomous vehicles, you, you could add five to 10 years out, quantum computing. Uh, if you really want to get fancy, you can add like even like gene splicing. I mean, this the world that we're going into, it's, it's a little bit crazy right now, because we're in a massive transformation in the world that we're going into, like 2030s, uh, there'll be more prosperity than anybody ever imagined. You know, the, the baby boomers brought 2 billion people out of poverty by by focusing on uh, productivity. The next wave is going to be even bigger. So just, just to bring things home, so now you get a flight plan, you got options, but how do you, you know, a lot of people have big ideas, but how do you follow through? I would, I would, um, I would recommend literally create you literally use some kind of project management software. In our case, we created the Freedom Platform that does all this, you know, the from destination, flight plan options, to follow through, no matter how big your team is. We have we have companies that have up to, so we have solopreneurs, we have individuals like the Army officers who want to have a life, and we have um, companies that have up to, you know, 300, 350 employees in them that, that use the Freedom Platform. Because it enables follow through, but but there's other project management level, you know, task level project management level software like Basecamp that's very very accessible, but create a very disciplined way to follow through. Like what is you only have one priority, and uh, you can have other secondary things, but focus on that on that main thing. Otherwise, it starts to feel overwhelming, right? That I'm sure you know the laundry list. There's more and more added. How about use use project management? Have one thing that you're going to focus on today. Um, and in, in my, my vision, I want to redefine what a growth CF is. I want to have the 500 year impact like Luca Pasili had for accounting, the father of accounting. I want to do the same thing for the growth CFO world world. So I published the book, the growth CFO void, but with Forbes hit, you know, a year and a half ago, hit number one bestseller. So I'm still enjoying that wave. And, um, you know, the, the, uh, and then from a, from a from a landing standpoint, a good place to start is vivid vision. So the book is a good place. You want to learn more about business building from a growth CFO lens. Uh, it's called the growth CFO void. And then if you really want to take the first step with me, I'm happy to, to, to give to you a copy of that vivid vision of your future self. And that you know, start with start with the end in mind that that destination. So um, from a from a call to action. It, um, you, you can grab my email. If you email me, I'll, I'll, I'll share that work, uh, Vivid Vision worksheet with you. And with Jeff, that's, we came in for a landing. Excellent. Thank you, Kurt. Great job. Good work. We appreciate you. And uh, we uh, let's uh, make sure we share your contact info with everybody. Yeah. Put it to the chat. Uh, we can do that, but go ahead and say it for the folks who are watching the stream. Okay. Yeah, my, my contact information is Kirk at KirkWMcLaren.com. So K-I-R-K-I-R-K-W-M-C-L-A-R-E-N.com. And that's the best way to get hold of me. Excellent. So Kirk, W-M-C-L-A-R-E-N.com. Yes. And if, if you... Uh, you can find him on the on the Facebook, on the LinkedIn, uh, on with lots of lots of letters after your name over there on LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard at work. Our our goal here at Speaker Club is to bring you some different kinds of expertise, and uh, we will keep on doing that.